I noticed when you when you were uh, doing the lessons, there was a lot of emphasis on pattern, mm -hmm. right? What role does that play in your teaching? Well, um, Catherine Stern must have loved patterns, mm -hmm. and I think that math is just full of patterns and relationships. And I think that the kids love. I mean, from a very young age, kids are trying to discover patterns and organize their world. Mm -hmm. So math. And these materials lend themselves perfectly to that. Like if you turn around and you see the fives here, it can, I mean, you could see how excited they were about sharing right. what they discovered. Right. So yes, it's full of patterns, um, and that's. I mean, I think that's what she she realized that kids love to find patterns and organize their world. So um, is that algebra, or what is that all about? I guess that is the beginning yeah. of algebra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, the, there's so much stress now in, in the standards and everything about algebraic thinking, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't know what that's all about. Mm -hmm. And I think um, a lot of what we saw today was made that very evident, yeah. right? Yeah. So that kids at, at, at a very young age can see, like, say, consecutive numbers. <clears throat> so if you say two consecutive numbers equals 11, I ha the, actually the kids are able to go to the board, make a triangle, and say 11 is the, you know, the total. Right. Can you give me two neighbors right. that equal 11? And they can do that. And they're, what they're doing is they're doing the algebra problem, find two consecutive numbers right. that equal 11. Right. And yes. your table with the nines, your, your exercises with the nines, where was it? BJ? Kept, PJ. PJ. Kept writing. And then they kept saying, yes, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, you would multiply it by 10. So you'd be x multiplied by 10. And then you'd minus the x, the multiplier, yeah. Right. And that was a very abstract kind of statement. Mm -hmm. And they, mm -hmm. they had their sort of competing uh, rules, right? Yes. That, that was really very good. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and that's at second grade. Right. It, it struck me a lot of what you, you were doing, you're using manipulatives, mm -hmm. but then you were also doing these very abstract explorations of number theory, basically, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. And these allow you to do that. Right. Yeah. So it's not just playing with sticks it's, or blocks, right? It's, it's very theoretical work. Exactly. And it's seeing relationships, bigger relationships, yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm convinced that the kids at a young age see the structure and have a firm foundation, then the algebra and the other kinds of skills will, will be able to build right on top of them. Right. Now, one question I had was how you, so you do this and, and you, they do written work in the sense of writing, you know, well, uh, 4 plus 5 is 9 and 6 plus 3 is 9 and so on. But I didn't, I didn't see you do anything with the standard algorithms. Do you, um, how do you deal with that? Do you bother with them? Well, what do you do? you're seeing second grade. That's true. And I want them at second grade to really understand what they're doing. Now, you put an algorithm on the board and that was new to many of them, and they started figuring, trying to figure out a rule. Right. Um, but what I want them to do for a long time is see, okay, if it's 45 times 9, I want them to know that five nines are 45. And then I want them to see that 4 really is 40, so I want them to do 40 nines right. and see what that looks right. like. And then eventually we'll put it together. But I'm afraid that some kids um, learn an algorithm too early, and then they don't understand the algorithm. And so then the, the, the foundation is shaky because they, they, they don't own it. They don't understand it. Then when they, and it calls for an algorithm later on, sometimes they even mix up the procedures. And right. they do like a subtraction procedure for an adding procedure because they really haven't understood it. Right. So the algorithm, like PJ has been dying to introduce the algorithm that you showed him today. And all year he's been telling me he wanted to introduce it, but I haven't done it yet. And he's been very patient. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it'll come. He keeps saying, can we do double-digit multiplication, and it'll come. But I'm a, I was afraid to introduce it too early because then, also, sometimes kids get into an algorithm and they know that's very powerful, and then they forget the thinking. And so I value the thinking and this firm foundation of understanding, and then when, the, when, the, when it's time for the algorithm, I put it. You put it in place. So you do put it in place. Yes. Oh, definitely. You're not against it. Oh, I'm not against it at all. I'm not against it at all. In fact, by the end of the school, mm -hmm. all this class, that second grade class, will know how to do double digit multiplication. But I don't want it. I don't. I'm afraid that I'm going to ruin their thinking it, uh, and get them rigid into into thinking about algorithms if I introduce it too early. 
at, and they're only in second grade, so they have lots of time. Right. But yes, no, I they learn all the algorithms. In fact, those um, we introduce. I introduced the addition for a long time, and then eventually an algorithm comes. And I, you know, well, after, actually up here, <laughs> these are different methods. Oh, actually, here's addition methods. So we, as a class, have come up with. Um, you can use the algorithm as one method for adding. But you can also use this place value. They called it number strings, which you can use for adding. Or you can use compensation, where those kids were already thinking about compensation, Converting. bringing over one of the numbers. Or you can use easy fives. Someone called it, and they like fives, and so they make everything into fives. Or you can count by tens and then add the ones. So when we do introduce the algorithm, we talk about that's one of the many methods you can use. But often in life, we use lots of different methods, and we don't always you know, use the traditional algorithm. But the algorithm is very powerful. So they know that this is very powerful if you're adding multi-digit numbers. OK. So suppose that <laughs> they do the four on the right, uh -huh. the four methods on the right. right. And those are, in fact, the mental procedures we know kids exactly. use, right? Exactly. We could predict in advance right. they're going to use these things if you let them. Right. Okay. So they do those first. How do you go from there to the algorithm? Oh, the How do you algorithm make makes that? sense. How would you do it? Oh, because it makes you, oh. you believe, okay? <laughs> we're, you're, we're your class. Okay. And we might do buggy algorithm. We might make mistakes <laughs> in algorithms the way I did before, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> so that one is up here. Right. So for the kids, actually, I have to say, my kids, because I've let them do anything they want and any way they want to do this, they usually start from the bigger numbers. Okay. And that's what we usually do in the grocery store in life. If we're going to add 29 cents and 44 cents, we think about the bigger numbers. So for a long time, my kids think about this is, they know this is 40 and 20 and that's 60. So some of my kids do this. So they know that's 60. And then they think, okay, this is 13. And then they think, oh, well, the 13 has a 10. It has to go in the tens column. So they say, now this is really not a 6, but a 7. 73. Okay, so that's a mini a, okay. a step in the middle because right. they like to start with the tens. And then eventually I say, well, if we're doing some very large numbers, there's a traditional way of doing it so you don't have to erase your six and put your seven right. on there. Right. We can start at the ones and we could go nine ones and four ones is 13 ones. So we'll write it over here and we think, okay, 13 ones. Well, there's a 10 and a three. The three we know goes in the ones column. And the 10, because this really means 10 plus three. This 10 goes in the tens column. We just do it as one long rod because mm -hmm. that's what fits mm -hmm. with our materials. So now we see we have four tens and two tens and one ten. And so we have seven tens. So, and we do it with things too. I mean, I have to show you, we do the same kind of with this. This thing is wonderful because this is a structure that helps you understand. Right. The base 10 system. Right. So if we're adding 29, it, again, right. yes, if we were doing 29, we'd have two tens. <clears throat> now, I could put in nine ones, or I could put in a nine for 29, because my kids are so used to adding with the whole thing. So if we're adding 44, so we have to have four tens. If I had four more tens, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what I've done with my ten. Oh, good. Thank you. My kingdom for some ten. OK, here's four tens. <laughs> And a, we're adding four tens and four. Okay, so we're putting these two together. So if we start with the ones, the, my kids know that nine and four is thirteen. So that's a that you got to convert that to a a ten and a three. If I can find a three. So they, they know that this is a ten. They could also imagine if we just chop yeah, it off. Yes, you chop it off. Right, right, exactly. Or you could put nine ones and four ones in there and chop it off. So you know that this is a ten. And a, oh, excuse me, a 10 and a 3, and then you have, you know, you're adding right. your 4. So that's how. Get 70. Mm -hmm. right. So you can see it here, too. So basically, you let them build up the ideas through their mental procedures, okay. uh, through those explorations, using the patterns, seeing the structures, and then gradually construct that algorithm right. out of those mm -hmm. ideas and in relation to the. Um, the materials. The, and then the algorithm is very powerful because they understand every bit of it and they also understand where they might use it because if you're adding, you know, thousands and thousands, right. you need an algorithm. Or a calculator. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay.